STI testing and treatment, reproductive health services for people living with HIV, including PrEP and PEP, birth control, Gardasil vaccinations, abortion services, miscarriage management, and services for trans and gender nonconforming people, including hormone replacement therapy. Everybody needs choices. And we're back. This is the live show on KWAM 9 the Talk Radio. This is The Voice, the talk show for the Mid-South, 107.9 and 990 Talk Radio. We're back, and we're talking about it's not about the statue. David, you still on hold? Yes. Oh. Did he hang up? No, I'm here. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, go ahead. Let me let me just share something with, with our listeners. In, in Germany, let's talk about Germany, mm -hmm. okay? Well, so right now today in Germany, there's a band on uh, Nazi swastikas mm -hmm. that, uh, for government property or anywhere that it can't be sold. And it wasn't really until Dylan Roof did the massacre in Charlotte that the, the, the governor and people in the South began to take notice and call for the removal of some of these uh, Confederate symbols, the military, militarized white supremacy in the United States. That it's a, it's a, it's a modern-day taboo sure, in Germany against the swastika sticker. Also, you can't even name your child Adolf. So Germany has taken a strong stance about the history of and what happened because of the Nazi uh, regime and made sure that they not allow this to become an icon or Nazi pro uh, paraphernalia to become a, a, a part of their history. You know, we got the National Historic Society that want to say that these items and uh, statues are protected because of the history and that they shouldn't have to come down, especially even in Memphis, Tennessee. But I want to applaud uh, one of our neighboring uh, southern states, Louisiana, New Orleans. Absolutely. Brought them down. And they, they, and they need to come down but just because of what they represent. But this is how ingrained that this, this position is about uh, celebrating our forefathers. May, may, may I add something in just here, the conversation I had with a talk show host who was on the other side, and I think he was saying, I don't think he was actually a supremacist. Yeah, he was, he just, was actually just let me finish this last one, and okay, then you can have it. Okay. If you take the nickel out of your pocket, and you look on the front, and you look on the back, the back side of the nickel has Monticello on there. Mm -hmm. Front side of the nickel has Jefferson on there. Mm -hmm. And so if you take the statues down, you still got it in your pocket. It's still on our money. It's still it's still there. When you, they talk about George Washington being the I first mean, president of the United States. <laughs> he was a big time slaveholder during the uh, American Revolution. All of them were. Hell, him and Thomas Jefferson. So you, you, if you're gonna talk about that, take all of them away. That's what I'm telling you. So it's, it's that's why I say it, it's not about the statue. Well, hold on, Go we ahead, got David. another call. We're gonna link the calls in. David Phillips, you on line with us? With uh, me, you, David, and Gwen. David Phillips, you on line? David Malik is on line. I'm, I'm here with you. Thank you for uh, take, uh, giving me the time to make, call in and make a show. Hold on, David. Hold on before you make your statement, David Phillips. David Malik, go ahead and make yours, and you can make yours, Phillips. Okay. Um, I had a conversation with uh, one of these Southerners who were proud of their heritage, and I didn't think that he was a, a supremacist um, from, from that standpoint, that he was proud of what his forefathers fought in the Civil War and all this kind of thing. And so I called, and, I, and, I, and what I, I, I shared with him, being an African-American, what I thought of the flag and what it means to me. Mm -hmm. And then I raised the question to him, well, after you told me that it wasn't about white supremacy and it's not about the Klan, which our people were terrorized under, then I asked him the question, then why are you letting those people hijack what that flag really is supposed to be about? <laughs> why aren't you fighting those people who are members of the Klan to keep them from hijacking what you say that flag is about? And, of course, no one has ever asked him that question before, so you really didn't have an answer for it. And all you could say was, and I appreciate that, well, good point. So the, the thing of it is, is that at some point, as African-American people, we're going to have to figure out that we're on a hamster wheel. Yeah. And that, as our brother James Baldwin said, I hope I don't butcher this too bad, nothing, not everything that you face can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. I agree. And white people have never faced white supremacy on a whole, not all of them, on a whole have never faced white supremacy 
slavery, what it meant to us. They didn't care about what those symbols did, and they still don't. They are arrogant enough to say that, well, that's because it's terrorism to you. It's just our history. And right. so that shows you still the type of arrogance that is still there not to consider the folks who were abused under that plan. All right. Mm-hmm. David Phillips, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, to piggyback off of what the good brother just said, I, I think uh, it's very interesting uh, the history that we have in this country that we've never seen a black uh, al-Qaeda or a, a black intifada happen in this country. I'm not advocating for that to happen, but I'm just saying I think that's interesting that we haven't saw black people participate in counterterrorism in a response to American terrorism, like to the Klan and to the white nationalists. Um, what's going on in Charlottesville, of course, is not about the statue. Uh, coming down, I think that this is one of many wedge issues that clever politicians like Donald Trump use to really stir up the pot. You know, mm-hmm. the issue to to divide us and make us turn on each other while they get their agenda to handle and done behind the scenes. Absolutely, that's mm-hmm. what I said at the beginning of the show. And also, if you jump back into the '60s, Richard Nixon was brilliant when he used this same strategy. It's called the subtle strategy. And he used it. And they went back in the archives and pulled this out again all the while we were focused on some emails mm-hmm. and the big Ozzy and making people uh, distracted and, 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 and it was working. It was well or machine. Nobody saw this coming. Well, well you know, you know, I, I hear you. I, I, I saw wanna, it coming. I want to point this out too, and, and I'm going to be short on this. I, most of the church I grew up in Piscopalian. So we had that music that, that wasn't that real good foot tap of music. Mm-hmm. So when I went to a Baptist church, most of the Baptist churches I know um, that I really liked, they had some really good choir. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't hard for the preachers to preach to the choir. Mm-hmm. So you are absolutely correct in your assessment that this is a red herring for those who want to control it as, 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 as puppeteers of those pro-white folks. But for all them white folks, you know, it's singing a good tune in that choir, ain't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so they, they're willing to do whatever is necessary just so they don't have, quote, unquote, that stain on them, right? Because they, because the lowest of the lowest in this country, as, as my brother Damon says, is African American, even if you're white and carry an EBT card. Right. Okay, so let's say we take the flags down. Mm-hmm. Let's say we take the statues down. Mm-hmm. Okay, then what? Well, I, I, I have no issue. In fact, um, I, was, I protested both in the, when the Klan visited here downtown. Um, and the, the tear gas was turned on us by an African American man. I protested when the first time when Sharpton came in at, at that same park that Tammy is in. I have no issue with, with, with taking those, those symbols down because I know what it means to them and what it means to white supremacists. But if all that we're going to do and without any other type of plan is to just take those statues down and not work on these other issues that we have, then you're right, it's not going to mean anything. But it's funny to me that in certain situations, you know, when people say that they don't have the same kind of vigor for a, a certain type of issue, they always say, then what after then? In other words, okay, you do that, then what? Mm-hmm. Well, I think that, that African-American people are smart enough to choose dumb and, and, and walk at the same time if they choose to do that. Well, I, that's all I hear. That's that's what I hear now, is well, that we're going to we gonna protest the flag. Why not, why not protest... The what's going on right here in our own city, our well, well, how our schools are closing at alarming rates, right around here, and especially the gentrification of downtown Memphis. We see this going on right before our eyes, and nobody's saying anything. How they snatching up all this property down there and shooting the value up, tore down everything around it, building condos right there on on uh, what's that street by your house? Blame your black city councilman. So. <laughs> I, I, I understand, but that's what I'm saying. It, we 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 got to do more than well, fight well, this I statue. Get I get that, Gwen, but I don't understand. This this is why this is why I have issues with people who, who do this. It's not like that that these people that one person can do everything. Right. There's plenty of room about suffering. If you want to do something to help our suffering, nobody's gonna keep you from doing that. If these people are, have the vigor and the enthusiasm for what they're working towards, and they want to do that, I mean, why why is this is a problem if if they don't. 
don't do everything that everything everything that everybody else thinks is more important. No, I'm not. Is, I'm not saying that it's a problem. What I'm saying is that the energy and the focus. Then, if that's, that's the case, energy focus. If, if your energy is at a different place, then use your energy and your focus to deal with those different issues. That's why I'm having this radio show. Okay, but and that's why they're doing what they're doing. I never, I have never criticized Black Lives Matter on this show. Yet. I did not call anybody names. <laughs> so yes. you calling Black Lives Matter? The okay. march is all over the United States, just like the march and the people that came okay. out to do the counter protest. I have Tammy Sawyer's Black Lives Matter, and I talked to her about calling in today. But my question was. Mm -hmm. What we gonna do next? Well, so well, maybe, maybe maybe we do what I do. Maybe maybe we align ourselves with people like Dr. Borkins who's doing some things from a business standpoint. Who is maybe, Dr. Borkins? Dr. Borkins is a um, uh, a doctor of finance who is working um, on on um, helping from an economic standpoint business entrepreneurship and gather people all over the country just like um, Claude Anderson and the rest of them. Okay, so these people that that, that you just called. Mm -hmm. Uh, have to make themselves visible so that the common man and the common woman would know them. We're going to let David get something in okay. the other day. Okay. Come on in, sir.
than these statues. And this is like they said, I saw somebody say that the, la the dog last crack is going to be the loudest. And this is the last crack. No, I don't, see right here. I don't think so. I think yeah. in the words of Brother Malcolm, this is the chickens coming home to roost. Uh, I blame this on black people. I blame it on white people.